Hey there, Mr. Thompson here with a maths video lesson. Uh, running through an example of some coordinate geometry stuff, some coordinate plane, xy plane type stuff, and um, finding the equation for the line, doing intercepts, a whole bunch of other stuff that has to do with the coordinate plane, and we're going to be doing it the whole way through using the CAS calculator that you can see to my left. Um, so let's just jump right into it. All right, the problem gives us these two points that we're going to be working with negative 3, 4, and 2, 1. All right, and that pen is a bit thick. I might um, make that a bit smaller. All right, so those are our two points, and the first thing we're asked to do is to find the equation um, of the line through those two points. Okay, the first step to doing this is finding the slope. So m, uh, the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for our equation, let's say this is point 1 and this is point 2. So y2 is going to be 1, right? And that's x2. So it's going to be uh, 1 minus 4, because that's the other y, that's y1, over 2 minus negative 3. And I'm going to put that in brackets. That's our x1, right? So I'm just going to plug that right into my calculator. And I'm going to get the, um, let's see, I'll pull it up. I'm going to get the uh, little fraction button here, and I'm going to do um, th my, the top of the fraction, so 1 take away 4, 1 minus 4, and then in the bottom of the fraction, I'm going to do 2 minus negative 3, and I can hit enter, and the, ans uh, the slope is negative uh, 3, 5. Okay, that's my slope, so m equals negative 3 over 5. All right, let me give myself a little, a few more lines of space here. Um, now what I need to do is I need to take that and plug it into my slope intercept form, y equals, or gradient intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Okay, so I know what m is, and I also have some y's and some x's, right? So I can pick either point 1 or point 2 and uh, use that to solve for B or uh, C, whichever uh, letter we like. All right, so it's going to be, um, instead of the slope, I'm going to put negative 3 fifths, okay? And that's going to be equal to, well, let's use um, point 2. So I'm going to say 1 equals negative 3 fifths, I'm going to put that in brackets, times 2 plus C. And we don't know what our um, C value is, and that's what we want to find. So we're actually going to, I'm going to use the um, algebra, and I'm going to use the solve feature, and I'm going to put my equation that I just typed in, oopsies, solve 1, uh, sorry, here we go, 1 equals negative, uh, I'll put negative 3, uh, I'll do a, do a fraction there. So I'll get my fraction menu. Negative 3 fifths. Okay. And then I'll just put times 2 plus uh, we can use C or B or whatever. And then I need to say comma C to tell the, the calculator that we're solving for C. And I hit enter and I get C equals, I'll write that a little bit nicer. So I'll erase that. I get C equals 11 fifths. Okay? So my equation becomes uh, Y equals M, which is negative 3 fifths, X plus 11 fifths. Okay? That's the equation. So that's the answer to that first part of the problem. All right, the first question. So now it says, identify the x and y intercepts of the line. Um, well, the y intercept we've already found, right? That was our c value. So y intercept equals 11 fifths, OK? To find the x intercept, I'm actually going to go to a, a new, um, new document. I'm not going to save. And I'm going to add a graph. And I'm going to plug my equation in. So type my equation. So this was negative 3 fifths x, oops, not there, we'll go out of the fraction, negative 3 fifths x plus another fraction, 11 fifths, OK? 
Okay, that's my fraction. I can graph that. And um, so I've got my y-intercept. It's 11 fifths up here. Um, so that's just a little over 2, 2 and a bit, right? 2 and 1 fifth. And then my um, uh, x-intercept looks like it's over here somewhere around 1, 2, 3, just less than 4. Okay, and one way that I can find that is I can trace. So if I go to menu and I go to analyze graph, I can do a, uh, well, I can find a zero, or a, here's trace, okay? I can trace, graph trace, and I can um, try to find, I can, I can sort of just guess, I think I can hit my arrows, and I can go and see if it gives me a zero. There we go, 3.67, which is probably three and two thirds. So let's use the zeros function like I was um, talking about before. We're gonna analyze graph and we'll find the zero. It, first, you have to give a bound. You have to give the left bound and the right bound, which says it's somewhere in there, and then it tells you, and again, it came up with 3.67. Now, we, we could just write x uh, intercept. Why does that not undo? x intercept equals 3.67, okay, and that's fine, um, but it's probably three and two thirds. So if we go back to our trace and we type uh, three uh, and we do a fraction, uh, that's not what we wanna do. Well, three and two thirds is um, nine plus two, so 11 thirds. So if we go back to the top of our fraction and get rid of the three and do 11, thirds, that should give us, yeah, that gives us our zero. It gives us zero in the y um, coordinate, which tells us it is the x-intercept. So if you wanted to be more accurate, you could do three and two thirds, okay, which the calculator rounded to be 3.67 um, the first time around, which is fine. But um, there we go. Uh, all right, it says find the distance between the two given points. Okay, um, so we have our, our two points from the beginning, which was negative three, four, and two, one, okay? Now, um, we could sort of graph those two points and think of it as Pythagoras, um, or we can use the distance formula, which is just x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, all under uh, square root. Um, and so let's just do that on our calculator. So I'm gonna go another new document. Okay, new calculator, I'm not gonna bother saving. And I can type in this whole equation. So we do y2, again I'll make this point one and this point two. So y2 is one, so I'm gonna use some brackets here. One, take away four, which is my other y value get out of my brackets and square that, plus uh, x2, oh sorry, I've done, I've done the opposite order of what I had written here, but it actually doesn't matter because we're just adding them together. So x2 minus x1 is two, oops, I need brackets, so two, take away uh, negative three, end bracket, I'll pop out of those brackets and square that. Again, sorry, I did this the wrong, the opposite order, I did the y's first rather than the x's like I have um, there, but it will come out the exact same. So I hit enter, square root of 34, and if we hit control, enter, um, that gives us the approximation, which is five, we'll just say 5.8, all right? And I'm not right, units. We didn't, we didn't have units for this problem. If it said it was in meters or centimeters or something, we could add that, but we'll just say units for now. All right, now let's just find the midpoint. Um, so in order to do that, the coordinates of the midpoint are the x coordinate, the average of the x coordinates and the average of the y coordinates. So I'm gonna do negative three plus two over two and four plus one over two as well. So um, these, this will give me my x coordinates and this will give me x coordinate and that and the other one will give me my y coordinate. So I can just do that on my calculator as well if I'm feeling a bit lazy. Negative three plus two and then just I'll just do this in two steps negative one half, all right? And then four plus one is five over two. Um, yeah, this is a bit, these are a bit easy, a bit silly to do it on the calculator, but five over two, we'll just do five halves. 
So that's my coordinates. We'll call it uh, capital M. I'll rewrite that so it's clearly a capital. Equals uh, negative one half comma five halves. That's the midpoint between those two points. And what I could do, uh, I could go back to my graph and plot that point and see if it shows up halfway between those other two points. Okay. Find the equation parallel to the line, uh, parallel to the original line that goes through the point 10, 2. So parallel, they're going to have the same slope. So my slope was uh, negative 3 fifths, right? That was where I calculated it right there. So the same slope, m equals negative 3 fifths, okay? And once again, we do the exact same thing as we did for that first problem. We plug it into the y equals mx plus c. So it's going to be the y is negative 2. So negative 2 equals negative 3 fifths times 10 plus c. So I can plug that into my calculator and solve again. So I'll go menu, um, algebra, solve, and I'll do negative 2 equals some brackets for my fraction. I can, I can actually just do my fraction as negative 3 divided by 5, get out of those brackets, do some, uh, and then I'll just put the 10 there, and then plus C, comma, tell it that we're solving for C, and hit um, enter. And it tells me that C equals 4. Okay, so I need to write that into an equation using the gradient, the same gradient as the original line, but the C this time equals 4. So I go Y equals negative 3 fifths X, plus 4. And that's the equation for that line that is parallel to the original. Now I need to write an equation for one that's perpendicular. Okay, the perpendicular slope is the negative reciprocal. Okay, so our slope was negative 3 fifths. The negative reciprocal of that, since th negative 3 fifths is negative, the negative reciprocal will actually be positive and we swap it, the, we uh, flip it over with the, the numerator and the denominator, so it's going to be positive 5 thirds, okay? And it's going through the origin, sorry, it got crossed out there, but that's 0, 0, okay? That actually tells us our y-intercept. It goes through the, the origin, means there is no y-intercept, the y-intercept the intercept is 0. So when we do y equals mx plus c, the c is just, uh, oops, wow, that was, yeah, thick. But um, the C just goes away. So we have our gradient, and it just goes Y equals 5 thirds X. Okay, you could put plus zero, but um, you don't have to. And that is the end of that. We didn't actually, yeah, we did use our calculator a fair bit. Um, did some graphing and some solving, which is great. Um, so hopefully those examples help. If you have other problems you want to see examples of, you can um, ask in the comments and let me know. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.